Leonard's was a department store in Fort Worth, Texas that opened in 1918 and closed in 1974. Thank you for your suggestion. Brothers John Marvin and Obadiah Paul Leonard were born in Cass County in Northeast Texas. The boys were five and one years old, respectively, in 1900. Father John was a farmer, but he and his wife, Emma Clementine, briefly operated a small general store in Linden, Texas. By 1915, Marvin Leonard was in Dallas, clerking for Lee Gardiner in Gardiner's salvage and grocery business for $27.50 a week. Each morning before dawn, Leonard and Gardiner went to the Dallas rail yards to buy unclaimed freight to sell at a low profit margin. In 1917, after the United States entered World War I, Marvin Leonard tried to enlist in the Army, but poor vision disqualified him. Instead, he joined the Red Cross and applied for a passport for England and France. But the war ended on November 11, 1918, before Leonard was sent overseas. Within days, Leonard moved to Fort Worth, beyond the sales territory of his mentor, Gardiner. In Fort Worth, Leonard bought the stock of a merchant who was going out of business. A month after the war ended, Marvin Leonard, on December 14, 1918, opened his own store at 111 North Houston, west of the courthouse taking over the space of Texas salvage and storage. Leonard had learned his lessons well with Lee Gardner. On his first day, the first Leonard store sold $195 in merchandise, mostly canned goods. The store originally measured just 25 feet by 60 feet. The store would eventually grow to cover multiple blocks along Houston, Throckmorton, West Weatherford and West First Streets. Youngest brother Obadiah Paul joined John Marvin in 1919 and the store became Leonard Brothers. In 1920, Marvin and Obi were living above the store. By 1926, in addition to groceries, the store had departments that sold meat fresh produce, drugs, dry goods, hardware, auto supplies, and seeds. This rapid growth filled an additional 40 feet of the storefront and a second floor to capacity. The brothers attributed their success to the company's slogan, more merchandise for less money. By the late 1920s, Leonard's would be known for their Christmas Toyland. In 1928, a Christmas ad featuring Toyland with daisy air rifles, roller skates, split reed doll cabs, the nearest thing to paradise for a youngster. In fact, everybody looked forward to Christmas. Leonard's Toyland was the most spectacular show in town. Leonard's called itself a one-stop shopping center. Indeed, at Leonard's you could buy a piano, a petticoat, or even a packet of pumpkin seeds. A shopper could get a fur coat or a windmill. Leonard's made its own pasta and candy. It even had its own creamery to make dairy products. It roasted its own coffee, baked its own bread, put its own Leonard's brand on products, laundry detergent, refrigerators, freezers. You could smoke a Leonard's brand cigar while pushing a Leonard brand lawnmower lubricated by Leonard's brand motor oil. Leonard's also contained a beauty salon, a grocery department, an auto service department, a farm department. Leonard's even printed its own script as store currency. In 1929, construction began on a new building, a block south of the original location. The building at 200 Houston Street was ready for occupancy in October of 1930. In 1930, the brothers bought the block two blocks south of their original location and built a store that covered the entire block. Leonard's had become the dominant retailer in Fort Worth. The store was a master of promotion. For example, it gave newcomers to town a welcome box containing a city map, a loaf of bread, a pound of coffee, and an egg separator. 
When a child was born in Fort Worth, the company sent the parents a welcome box that contained a baby rattle and a pair of baby shoes. The store sent the child a birthday card annually for the first three years and included a coupon for a free 8x10 photo at the store's studio. In 1931, the brothers opened Everybody's Store in their former Leonard Space on Houston Street, west of the courthouse. Everybody's would expand its space in 1948. The new Leonard Brothers opened as the Great Depression began, but the Leonards adjusted from the boom years of the 1920s to the bleak years of the 1930s. They built traffic in their store by offering services such as check cashing and by selling certain products, particularly bread, as the lowest price in town. By the end of the 1930s, they were selling 7,000 loaves of bread a day. In March of 1933, when President Franklin D. Roosevelt closed all banks, Leonard Brothers continued to cash checks with Leonard Script. The local merchants accepted this paper money and eventually redeemed it at Leonard Brothers. In characteristic fashion, the Leonards made a profit and built a customer loyalty by a grand gesture. People kept enough of the script as souvenirs to pay for the cost of printing and more. For years, customers shopped at Leonard Brothers because the store had helped them out when currency was scarce. In much the same fashion as modern discount stores, Leonard Brothers built close relationships with their suppliers and were the heaviest users of newspaper advertisements in Fort Worth. These practices allowed them to restock items daily and to sell in volume at the lowest possible price. They varied from modern discount stores, however, in that they carried a full line of products instead of just those with a high turnover rate. By 1939, the brothers had added a new floor and air conditioning to their building. They also expanded their product lines to include furniture and appliances. A separate building housed a farm store that sold and serviced a complete line of farm equipment. The Leonards was ready for the prosperity of the World War II years. In 1946, construction began on a new building across West 1st Street. A tunnel connected the two buildings. When the new part of the store opened on September 1st, 1948, it featured an escalator, the first in Fort Worth. On Saturday, more than 40,000 customers rode that escalator. The brothers had greatly expanded the retail realm to six city blocks. In 1949, the Santa's Rocket Express monorail in Toyland opened such high volume and diverse product lines demanded a special management style. Department heads were virtually independent storekeepers. They bought and sold with minimal directions from the Leonards. The brothers maintained some control, however, by paying managers relatively low salaries, but high bonuses based on sales. They were also careful to build up a sense of working for the same team. Years later, employees maintained a high degree of loyalty to the brothers and their business. In 1953, Leonard's opened its sprawling parking lot along the river, which at first was the Enclave Batter Cake Flats, and later the Barrio La Corte once stood. Shuttle buses carried shoppers to the store. Leonard Brothers also was the first downtown retailer to desegregate. In the early 1960s, before the passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, the store's maintenance crew removed the designations white and colored from the all restrooms and drinking fountains. The brothers instructed the manager of the previously whites only cafeteria to serve blacks. This made good business sense because blacks formed a significant percentage of the customer base at Leonard Brothers. The Leonard MNO Subway opened on February 15, 1963. They used modified PCC cars from Washington, D.C.'s recently abandoned streetcar system. The subway ran between the store and the Big Leonard's remote parking lot on the river. The MNO subway 
was the only privately owned subway line in the United States. Free parking and a free subway ride helped the downtown store retain its customer volume even as the suburbs grew. One measure of this volume was the number of employees. When the subway opened, 2,000 people worked in the 185 departments of Leonard Brothers. In 1965, advanced age and declining health led to Marvin to sell his 55% share of the store to Obadiah and his family. In 1967, one year shy of the store's golden anniversary, Charles Tandy of the Tandy Corporation, who owned the Radio Shack chain, bought Leonard's department store for $8.5 million. Members of the Leonard family continued to help manage the store, which still did business under the Leonard name. John Marvin Leonard died on August 26, 1970, at the age of 75. After the change in ownership, the company opened several suburban stores and began to offer only products with a high turnover rate, but despite these innovations, the profitability of the store declined. The store and its subway continued to operate under the Leonard's name until 1974 when Tandy sold the store to Dillard's department stores. Later that year, Dillard's dropped the Leonard's name. Leonard's department store was a Fort Worth institution for more than 50 years, an anchor of the downtown where you could buy anything and it was where everyone went on Saturdays. It had its own subway system to ferry shoppers to parking lots near today's Panther Island Pavilion. Its sales volume surpassed that of any other single store in the Southwest. More significantly, Leonard Brothers' numerous construction projects and ability to draw customers helped keep the downtown area vital despite the pull of the suburbs. Tandy demolished the department store buildings and built on the site of the Charles D. Tandy Center with two office towers, one of which housed Tandy headquarters, and a shopping mall anchored by a Dillard's store. The entire complex was completed in 1978. In 1979, Leonard's was destroyed to make room for the Worthington Renaissance Fort Worth Hotel. Obadiah Paul Leonard died on December 25, 1987, at the age of 89. The shopping mall was never very successful, and by 1995, Dillard's had closed its store. In 1996, the mall was reborn as the Fort Worth Outlet Square, a collection of discount-priced stores. The Tandy Subway would discontinue its service in August of 2002. Today, there is a Leonard's Department Store Museum where you can see the history of the iconic department store. In 2023, the Leonard's Museum moved to the Fort Worth Museum of Science and History. So what do you remember about this place? Leave a comment or a suggestion for a future video below. And if you haven't already, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. Yeah, bringing back memories from the good old days. That's super cool, man.